I was in this industry even before it was called IoT. Back in the M2M days. We do smart buildings, we do smart schools, we do smart facilities. We've been in the IoT space since 1954. We call it the internet of everything. We do smart kids, we do smart parents. The internet of us. We only work with open source. Could be Sigfox, could be Laura, could be Weightless P. We technically can't work with, we can work with Sigfox. Yes, we're production ready. Yeah, we can do that. We can do anything. Do smart bins, we do smart trash cans, we do smart- Well, we're not just a platform, we're an entire ecosystem. It's the platform end to end? We're all the way on the edge. Edge computing. We play in the fog. AWS is down. AWS is down. We have over 50 or 100, 200 integrated devices. By 2025, there will be over 20 billion, 40 billion. We 600 trillion connected devices. Infrastructure, we do smart. Now the gateway can be like a little gateway, it could be a big gateway. You may not even need a gateway, you know, because it could be like on a cell tower. We use LoRaWAN. One. But all I'm hearing is Laura Lan, Laura Lan, Laura Lan. Laura B1 Kenobi. Oh, your devices are Laura Lan. Laura by far is the best. No, 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 no. That's Laura Lan. Not Laura Wan, so that's not gonna work. Do you have a TMP36? IP66? Do you have a TMP102? Oh, your device is IP100. This is on 868. So what I'm gonna totally suggest right now, we should do... Our A POC. You know, a POC. That's the way to go. Let's do a POC. We do smart farms, we do smart animals. I need someone to fix dev for me, it's broken. We're disrupting the disruptive. I really need it. It's the Uber of IoT right now. I've never seen a battery this shape before. We're hardware agnostic. We partner with anyone. Even our competitors. We're connectivity agnostic. On our cloud? We're cloud agnostic. Yeah, we're cloud agnostic. On our cloud? Maybe we're more like cloud atheist. Our young primary in the cloud. Yeah, I mean, I already have it working on my Arduino, so we should be good to go. Insects, we do smart filming. What do your APIs look We're like? We're back in the NBIoT. So pod. first, you start with the end Does this of network service support smart downlink? Smart chairs. The fog. What do you mean we're having a production? Smart we got cables. Yes, we're going to talk about IoT the box for my devices. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome their CEO, Kevin Brumber. Hello, hello. All right, guys. So thanks for having me. Um, you know, we made that video last year. And uh, we made it because I was standing around in the office and I kept hearing the phone calls and it was the same thing over and over and over again. And at the end of the day, I thought to myself, well, not at the end of the day, I've always thought this, you know, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because we want to make money, right? We're in IoT to make money. And um, we've been fortunate uh, to have a little bit of success. Let me see which one I got to push here. There we go. So we've had some success in the last year making some money. And we want to share with you what our experience has been. And that video was all about jargon. And it's, it's not about jargon. We want to explain to you what we've done and share that experience. And hopefully, uh, you guys will be able to make some money in IoT as well. So here's, here's, here's the big issue, right? Uh, I call this proof of concept hell. Uh, this is where we were over 12 months ago. You'd get the phone call, there's a huge opportunity, they want to start a proof of concept. So great, that sounds great, right? But it's not great, because you sit there and you spin your wheels, you don't know what the expectations are, you don't know what the end is. That's not where we wanted to be. Where I wanted to be was in repeatable, reoccurring revenue, heaven. Money falling all over you, that's where we wanted to be. And so, this is, this is how we started to think. And the big issue that we had with, our, with POCs, the reason that we were in them so often is because your platform can do so much. And most platforms can do a lot because all you have to do is mix and match a whole bunch of different sensors to solve a different problem. But that is the problem. You can't sell everything to everyone, right? That's, that's one of the issues, is if you're trying to do everything and sell for everything, 
it's not gonna work, so you gotta focus. And so how we broke down the industry is I created this little chart here, so complexity moving up on the left axis, and then you've got revenue over here on the right, and at the top, you've got your large enterprise in your municipalities. Of course, there's a whole bunch of revenue that's over there, but they're very complex. Usually, it's not the technology that's complex, but it's the sales cycles, and it's all the bureaucracy, and all the people who have to make the decisions to close the deal. So what we decided to do, and I put SMB here, but it's not actually SMB, it's SMB and medium and large enterprise. The, the key here is it's replicatable solutions or replicable solutions with minor customization and short sales cycles where you know where the decision makers are. Okay, so this is what we did with, with our IoT in a box. And then we said, well, what's the, what's the industry that we should go after? Um, so the first box that we put together, and literally last year we came out with IoT in a box, and it was really funny because you'd go inside the trade show and we're the makers of a product called Cayenne, which has 600,000 developers on it, which sounds great and exciting, and it is exciting. We get a lot of developers talking to us. But when we put this box uh, in the trade show, the first thing that happened was people would walk by and they would laugh because they're like, oh, a box, IoT, ha, 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 that's funny. And then they would walk over and they would look at it and they'd say, wow, what, is your, what does that box do? And psychologically, what it did was they said, oh my gosh, it has everything in there. So you mean you can solve for this particular use case? So you've got the gateway, you've got the sensors, you have everything that's in there. So psychologically, people got their head around it. So it was just really a way to change people's minds um, of, of, of what it is that, that, you know, that we got. Um, and we're really proud that we created this, I feel, really great product. Now what? You got a product. Who cares? Nobody cares. It's only half the equation. You got a great product, but now you got to deal with pricing, you've got to deal with training, marketing, sales, commission, billing, installation, and support. Unfortunately, IoT has hardware. It's not like regular SaaS, where you just turn it on and you build, there's actually installation and there's reverse logistics. And who's gonna own the hardware? Is the guy who's selling it, does he own it? And who does the installation? There's a lot of tough questions before you can start making money. So one of the other things that we had to make a decision was, are we gonna sell directly to the end customer? Or are we gonna sell through partners? So this is again focusing. So it wasn't just focusing on the software in our market, but it was also focusing on how we're going to sell. So if we're direct, we're going to get higher margins, we're in more control, um, uh, you know, we're, we're more agile. But for me, I didn't want to build up this huge direct team, so I wanted to work through partners because I can scale very wide. But more importantly, what we discovered, and this is really important, is that there are system integrators that are out there today already selling to businesses. They're already selling Microsoft Office, they're selling tablets, they're selling voice over IP and wireline. They have the relationship with the end customer. And that's more important than anything because he can pick up the phone and say, hey dude, I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna show you a new product. If you don't have that relationship, it's pretty hard to get through that front door. So for us, that was the deciding factor. We want to sell through partners, okay? So we're really proud of this. Our first really big partner is Sprint. Um, in Europe, they may not be known, but they're the fourth largest cellular uh, company in the United States. Uh, this year, they're actually merging with T-Mobile, and after the merge, they'll be number one ahead of Verizon and AT&T. So um, when you look at Sprint, they have five sales channels. They have their direct team, they have their indirect team, they have their enterprise team, they have a wholesale team, and they've got their uh, online team. And when we started to teach these salespeople our product, what we learned was that they really don't care about Laura. They don't care about sensors. They don't care about the distance. They don't care about the battery life. They don't care about any of that stuff. So you got to cut the tech talk. They just don't care. They care about making money. That's all they care about. So then the next issue that we needed to deal with is pricing. So when you, when you set your price, you've got to make sure that there's enough money in there that you can pay these guys commission. 
you also need to make sure that the customer, is it going to be OpEx or CapEx? Some businesses can afford to do CapEx. Others need to do OpEx. And then at the end of the day, you've got to make sure that there's enough profit. Lastly, we learned that salespeople need training uh, and uh, so that they can sell to the end customer. So I'm going to show you guys an example of how we actually talk to the salespeople. And you're going to see uh, there's very little mention of IoT. It's only really here on the first slide. So what happens is, the, imagine you're the salespeople at Sprint. I come to you and I say, hey, we have a new product that you're going to sell to your customers. And they're like, yeah, that's great. We're going to make more money. Like, awesome. We say, OK, refrigeration monitoring. What you're going to do is, and we hold up actually a piece of paper that's a temperature log. And we say, these temperature logs have to be filled out by human beings in these businesses. And they have to do it by law. The FDA, the CDC, the public health department. So there's people walking around filling out logs so that they can stay compliant. And then we say, look, this is a real use case, by the way. This is St. Luke's Hospital in Kansas City. This is 100 refrigerators um, that the director of nutrition, there's three departments within the hospital, the director of nutrition has to monitor 100 refrigerators six times a day. He's got nurses going down, filling out these logs. At $65 an hour, that's over a dollar per reading. That's ridiculous. That's 18,000 readings a month. They didn't even realize how much money they were spending. But put that to the side, can you imagine in 2019, you have nurses walking into coolers and doctors, and they're taking down readings. That's absolutely insane. And do you think that those individuals know if a refrigerator is going to go out? Of course they don't. But if something goes out and you lose blood, that's invaluable. If you lose vaccine, it's tens of thousands of dollars. If you lose food, of course, it's expensive. And then we hold up our little sensor and we say, look, you sell this to the hospitals for $9 per month to monitor their refrigerators. And immediately they can see the ROI. So, so far, I haven't said anything about long range and LoRa and any of this stuff, right? It's all about ROI. It's about solving somebody's problem. And not only that, but then we tell them, look, you're already selling to these customers. You're selling to hospitals and hospitalities and restaurants, industrial. And we even go one step further, and we tell them who to talk to in each of these. We say, in the hospitals, talk to the director of nutrition talk to the director of labs, talk to the head of pharmacy. So in each of these, we do this. And then the most important thing is we tell them how much money they can make. This is the part where they're actually, that's where they care. And there's a funny story because where I had my biggest aha moment was we saw another vendor come in to train these people, these salespeople, and we had first given our pitch before we toned it down to make it more sales friendly. And we were talking about long range and batteries and everybody sat there and they were like, oh, that's all great. And then there was an LED company that came on after us. And they walked on stage and they said, hey, you can replace LED and you guys can make a ton of commission. So all you gotta do is go to a hospital, get the, uh, get the bill from them, send it to us. And um, if we close the deal, and then their next slide was a Porsche. They're like, if you're the top sales guy, you're going to win this Porsche. All these guys were like, I, you know, I'm in. So you know, we're competing trying to sell our Laura, and that it just it hit us that we needed to, you know, to evolve. The whole point of this is that we're very proud. What we have now is we're replicating reoccurring revenue. We're repeating the process. We're selling to hospitals. We're selling to hotels. We're selling to food services. And we're coming out with our next box solution, and we're going to have that repeat process all over again. And when I say we, it's not us, but it's our salespeople such as Sprint and our other partners. And um, so if I were to break it down and summarize, what I would say is create a specific product for a specific market. Salespeople only care about commission. I promise you. That's all they care about. Pricing is critical. I can't tell you, you know, uh, you make a mistake there and you don't have enough to pay the commission or your margins aren't high enough or you're doing OPEX and the business can't handle OPEX. They, they want to do business as CapEx. And the training material. You have to provide training material that's specific to salespeople. 
um, and I'd say just go make some money. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin Brombo. Um, that was actually quite short, so we do have time for questions for Kevin, if you do. Um, well, actually, I have one. Sure. Uh, did you see the previous uh, presentation from Sander, uh, Cut Bullshit Marketing? Say that again? Uh, the previous presentation from Sander was about Cut Bullshit Marketing. Yeah. Uh, one of the, the things he said was that, okay, you, you can go to a company and, and say that we solve your problems efficiently uh, and you're going to save money, uh, but that's the rational part. Yeah. The emotional part, he demonstrated that if you build a community with people who tinker about with your stuff, that actually works best. And you get good testimonials, not only from the CEO, but also from its users. How, how do you, you work with that? To, 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 uh, to make the contagious creativity of the users visual. Yeah, so um, we play in a couple of different spaces. So one, the hardware manufacturers. So our solutions are hardware manufacturer agnostic. So we have manufacturers from all over the world that submit their devices. So we have an ecosystem of these device manufacturers and then we can create these different boxes. So there's a community that's in there, but where the real community happens is like system integrators and resellers who are succeeding. So um, they're sharing uh, successes with each other and what they've done. Uh, so it's, it's absolutely important to have a, a community and, and feed off of each other. Yeah, so there is a community. How, oh, how do you yeah. make that visible? Uh, do they have uh, online platforms, social media accounts, and then um, do they share stories? So uh, in the reseller uh, division, so like over here with uh, with the Sprint uh, on their site, if you went to the reseller uh, marketplace, you could actually sign up to become a reseller. And in the first 30 days, we signed up over 300 resellers. And we do webinars, and these guys are exchanging stories, and they're telling about what worked, what didn't work. And it's interesting because I think I mentioned when we first launched our company, we launched a product called Cayenne, and it has 600,000 developers. And you can go on the site right now and you can see a whole bunch of users on forums, but it's different conversations. The guys who are in the, the development community, you know, they're talking about uh, you know, MCUs and pins and range and that kind of stuff. These guys are talking about you know, how, do I, how do I make money. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, suggestions, opinions, according to Kevin? No, thank you very much. Kevin Brombo. Thank you.